Welcome to our video, Japan and the World. The topic for this time is, the winner of the GOP debate was Joe Biden, or the winner of the GOP debate was Donald Trump. I would like to focus on the opinions in Newsweek, August 24, 2023. The first opinion is, the winner of the GOP debate was Joe Biden, by Mr. Peter Roth, a Newsweek contributing editor, and is a veteran Washington journalist and former U.S. News and World Report columnist. The winner of the GOP debate was Joe Biden, opinion, by Peter Roth. If there's one thing Wednesday's GOP presidential debate made clear, you can still end up with a dumpster fire even without former President Donald J. Trump there to ignite it. The candidates on stage at the talkie in Milwaukee said many praiseworthy, exciting things, but none of it was able to overshadow the entitled, millennial arrogance exhibited by tech entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy, whose disruptions allowed him to dominate he debate. That's a shame. No candidate had a breakout moment, the kind of thing the pundit class looks for as a signal that someone might be breaking out of the pack. Nevertheless, Ramaswamy consistently presented the best formulations of the kinds of ideas on domestic policy needed to wrest the nomination from Trump and to beat Joe Biden. On foreign policy, however, he came up short. Former Vice President Mike Pence and ex-U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Nikki Haley both schooled the first-time candidate regarding what's at stake in Ukraine and why America needs to continue to support the effort to repeal its Russian invaders. If one of the participants has to be designated the winner, it's probably Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. This year has been as bad for him as 2022 was good, and he came into the debate almost but not entirely on fumes. He still runs second to Trump in the polls albeit a distant second, and he has more money in the bank than any of the other candidates challenging the frontrunner. He's also reshuffled his campaign team twice already and somehow seems to have forgotten why he got into the race. Having also been on the receiving end of Ramaswamy's overdone barb should signal to DeSantis, and everyone else, that a change in campaign tactics is needed. It's hard to push back against a verbal buzzsaw, so don't try. Talk about your record. For DeSantis, that should be a desirable option. He kept Florida open while most of the country remained in pandemic-inspired lockdowns, brought down the crime rate past significant education reforms that empower parents to play a greater role in their children's educational success, and kept the state's finances on an even keel. Talking about things like that persuades voters to give you a second look. Being a culture warrior doesn't, which is something Pence, a longtime conservative leader who accomplished a great deal as a member of the U.S. House of Representatives and as governor of Indiana, is still apparently learning. South Carolina Senator Tim Scott, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, and North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum all turned in serviceable performances, sometimes coming close to punching above their weight. Christie's serious, meaningful answer about the president's responsibility to be candid at all times with the American people in response to a nonsensical question from debate moderator Martha McCallum about UFOs was inspiring. Still, none of them took command of the stage enough to shine. The same cannot be said of former Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson, whose lackluster speaking style hid whose benefit, the fact that he's bereft of any real ideas on how to get the nation moving. His time, if it ever existed, has passed. The big winner in all this was President Joe Biden. The attacks on his record were uniformly weak, lacking in specifics and landing with the dull splat of a handful of wet noodles. His policies have weakened the nation's economy, driven inflation to heights not seen since the 1970s, and pushed the dream of home ownership out of the reach of first-time homebuyers as the Federal Reserve took steps to bring that inflation down. Had he been there, Trump would have launched an attack on the current president's record with savage enthusiasm. The wannabes competing with him for the nomination must step up their game. Perhaps none of them are yet convinced they have a real chance to win as long as the former president stays in the race. As for Trump, we don't know yet how many people watched the debate and how many logged into his pre-recorded interview with Tucker Carlson shown over the app formerly known as Twitter. If they watched Trump, they got what they probably expected, along with a flurry of emails and social media posts responding to what was being said about him in the debate, so nothing that was said is likely to change their vote. However, if they watched the debate, they might have seen an inkling of something or someone they could support instead of the former president who, as I have written before, is campaigning as though he were an incumbent. In a sense, he is, but tastes change. Just ask George Herbert Walker Bush, who had a 90% approval rating a year before losing the White House to Bill Clinton. Stranger things have happened. Admittedly, not many, but Trump ignores the field of those running behind him at his peril. One might just say something that catches on with the voters and causes the race to tighten quickly. A Newsweek contributing editor Peter Roth is a veteran Washington journalist and former U.S. News and World Report columnist. 
a former senior political writer for United Press International, he appears regularly on U.S. and international media platforms. He can be reached at rothcolumns at gmail.com and followed on social media at the Roth Draft. The views expressed in this article are the writer's own. The next opinion is, the winner of the GOP debate was Donald Trump, by Mr. Claston Bernard, an Olympian and Commonwealth gold medalist, author and former congressional candidate. The winner of the GOP debate was Donald Trump, opinion, by Claston Bernard. The first Republican presidential debate in Milwaukee, Wisconsin was a spirited affair, with presidential hopefuls trading barbs and laying out their credentials and vision for America. One candidate stood out above all, newcomer Vivek Ramaswamy. In a sea of Renos, he was the only one to articulate an America-first agenda that prioritizes the citizens of this country. In fact, his ideas sounded a lot like former President Donald Trump, who Ramaswamy called the best president of the 21st century. So in a way, the real winner of the debate was Trump. Vivek spoke of putting America first in terms of our foreign policy, a Trump agenda item that stands in stark contrast with the Republican establishment position articulated by every other candidate on that stage. Vivek said we should stop sending money to Ukraine, a view shared by a majority of Americans, yet vanishingly few of their political leaders. He also said that our meddling in Ukraine will push Russia further into the arms of China. And he said we should be focused on our problems here at home. He's right. America was not created to be the world police that the Republican neocons made us into in recent decades. It was created to be a center of world commerce and to look out for the American people. It was Trump who brought that guiding principle back to the American discourse, and Ramaswamy who brought it to Wednesday night's debate. Ramaswamy also rightly pointed out that people are hungry for meaning in response to a question of the increasing gun violence across our country. He pointed out that America is in an identity crisis, calling this a dark moment in America's history. Vivek also talked about the impact of fatherlessness in the home, something that we should be talking about more. There were other strong performances. Former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley was on point, especially when she pointed out that Republicans are also to blame for our out of control spending. She effectively challenged Vivek on foreign policy issues and believes America should be the world police, projecting strength while dealing with our domestic issues. Former Vice President Mike Pence and South Carolina Senator Tim Scott's best moments were on abortion when they framed abortion as a moral issue and not a state or federal issue. But Asa Hutchinson and Doug Burgum failed to inspire. Meanwhile, Trump's closest rival, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, struggled at times. He just couldn't seem to generate a memorable moment, though he was solid on the border. And former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie seemed like a confused pit bull. He had one good line, he compared Ramaswamy to chat GPT, the reason it's an effective line is also the reason it wasn't really Ramaswamy who won but Donald Trump, you can't really point to a single view Vivek holds that doesn't seem to come straight from a summary of Trump's best ideas. Vivek Ramaswamy is smart and articulate. He's a good debater and an effective voice for the America First agenda. But at the end of the day, if you can't find a real difference between yourself and Donald Trump, one might reasonably ask, why would you run against the man you've called the most successful president of this century? Maybe Vivek is still introducing himself to Americans, or maybe he doesn't have an answer to that question. But for people who like Trump they appreciate his unwillingness to attack his predecessor. Like Trump Ramaswamy is right that the country is coming apart at the seams. He's right that our foreign policy seems designed to hurt Americans. He's right that our children are lost. He's right because Donald Trump was right about these things. It's why Trump is so far ahead of his nearest rival, and why it is Trump who won the first GOP primary debate. Claston Bernard is an Olympian and Commonwealth gold medalist, author and former congressional candidate. The views expressed in this article are the writer's own.